Hey there, thanks for tuning into our channel. My name is Wiley Allen and I'm the founder here at Pinnacle Supplementation. Today, we are going to continue our discussion on protein, but first, let's remember what we established in the previous video on protein. It is important that absolutely everyone is getting enough protein in their diet. Almost everyone could benefit from consuming more protein than they do right now, and Taking high amounts of protein is safe. Now that we can build off those basic facts, we can look at how one can better personalize their protein intake based off their individual goals. So let's get right into it. Now, just three years ago in 2017, the International Society of Sports Nutrition came out with their position stand on protein. And the reason that I wanna take a look at this position stand is because look at how many authors contributed to this research article okay a whole bunch there and they're all protein experts in their own right and the actual recommendations that they give are based off of over 200 references okay hundreds of studies are what these recommendations that they give are actually based off of all right so this is a very credible piece of work a lot of time a lot of research went into this, all right? So based on the current available literature, the position of the society is as follows. Number one, let's say that you're trying to build muscle, which is the most common reason that someone would care about their protein intake. So an acute exercise stimulus, particularly resistance exercise and protein ingestion, both stimulate muscle protein synthesis and are synergistic when protein consumption occurs before or after resistance exercise. So I don't think I need to go into that too much. I think it's pretty common knowledge that if you want to build muscle, then you need to be making sure you're getting enough protein. But you can't just take a whole bunch of protein and expect to build a whole bunch of muscle mass, okay? You need to give your muscles a reason to grow. And that reason would be resistance exercise or lifting weights. When you lift weights, you're breaking down your muscles and then the protein that you consume is rebuilding your muscles and building them even stronger and bigger. So number two, the big question, how much protein do you want? Well, for building muscle mass or maintaining muscle mass, then an overall daily protein intake in the range of 1.4 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram body weight per day is sufficient for most exercising individuals. And you can calculate those numbers by first knowing what your body weight in pounds is, and then you have to divide that number by 2.2 to get your body weight in kilograms. And once you have that value, then you can multiply it by 1.4 and multiply it by two to give you your protein intake range. And if you're trying to maintain muscle mass, then you could aim for more of that lower end of that range there. And if you're trying to build muscle mass, then you can aim for the higher end of that range. And another common recommendation out there is simply to take in one gram of protein for every pound body weight that you are. Um, so if you weigh 200 pounds, then you take 200 grams of protein. And that's a common recommendation because it's just easier for people to understand. And that would equate to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram body weight. So a little bit higher than this recommendation range. But that's okay because taking more protein can lead to other beneficial effects, such as number three here that higher protein intakes of 2.3 to 3.1 grams per kilogram body weight may be needed to maximize the retention of lean body mass when people are cutting down on their calories. Okay, so you actually need more protein when you're trying to cut weight than you do when you're needing to gain muscle mass. All right, and the reason for that is that when you're cutting down on your calories and you're trying to lose fat mass, if you don't get this amount of protein, then you're going to lose muscle mass as well, which you probably don't want to do. All right, so number four here as well, that higher protein intakes of more than three grams per kilogram body weight 
has positive effects on body composition, i.e. promoting loss of fat mass. So taking more than three grams of kilogram body weight of protein not only is going to help you maintain lean body mass, but it's actually also going to help promote even more loss of fat mass. And here's one of the studies that those recommendations are based off of. The study was looking at a high protein diet, 3.4 grams per kilogram body weight in both men and women doing resistance training as well. And the results were that the subjects were split into two groups. They consumed either 2.3 or 3.4 grams of protein per kilogram body weight. Now, this value here, the 2.3, that is not a low amount of protein. That's a very high amount of protein as well and can easily increase muscle mass. But what they are trying to look for is if we increase the amount of protein, can we also decrease fat mass as well as increase muscle mass and the results were very promising okay so the higher protein group the 3.4 had a lower body weight lower fat mass and lower percent body fat compared to the lower protein group all right which is good that's what we want to see and on top of that they equally improved maximal strength all right, so the higher protein group, it still increased muscular strength just as well as the lower protein group. So that means that consuming a high protein diet, 3.4 grams per kilogram body weight with resistance training offers benefits in regards to body composition because you're not only increasing muscular mass, but you're also decreasing fat mass, all right? And on top of that, I just wanna reemphasize this fact that there is no evidence that consuming a high protein diet has any negative effects. Yes, this is a high amount of protein, but it's also a safe amount of protein to be taking every single day. And I just wanna show another meta-analysis here that was looking at high protein diets compared to standard protein diets in people that are trying to lose weight. And the results were, compared with an energy-restricted standard protein diet, a high-protein diet with the same amount of calories provides modest benefits for reductions in body weight, fat mass, and triglycerides, and for mitigating reductions in fat-free mass and resting energy expenditure. And these two are a big deal because these are two of the biggest problems that people have when they're trying to lose weight. They also lose muscle mass and their natural resting energy expenditure goes down. So taking a high amount of protein helps mitigate those negative effects of weight loss. So if your main goal is to lose weight or if your main goal is to lose weight as well as increase muscle mass at the same time, then you need to be looking for at least three grams of protein per kilogram body weight every single day. And that's a lot of protein, all right? So if you weigh 200 pounds, for an example, that equates to at least 270 grams of protein every single day. That's a lot of protein. And moving on to number five here, what should your protein serving size be? Well, the optimal protein intake per serving for athletes to maximize muscle protein synthesis are mixed and are dependent upon age and recent resistance exercise stimuli. General recommendations are 0.25 grams high quality protein per kilogram body weight or 20 to 40 grams. Okay, now that is not a very specific statement here. It's pretty vague, pretty broad answer to the question. And there is a reason for that because you can really take as much protein per serving size as you want and you can take as high of a serving size as you want. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are stuck on this belief that there's a maximum amount of protein that you can take per serving, like 20 to 30 grams, that is going to maximize muscle protein synthesis. And then any amount more than that is just going to be wasted. And that is a very flawed statement because protein breakdown has not been taken into account when evaluating the anabolic response to protein intake. 
all right? And higher protein intakes than say 20 to 30 grams when protein synthesis is maximized is characterized by suppressed protein breakdown. So this explains why when net protein synthesis is measured, the relationship between amino acid availability and net gain remains linear. So there is no plateau of effect at higher levels of availability. So there is no practical upper limit to the anabolic response to protein or amino acid intake in context of a meal or serving size of protein. And here's an actual study to support that. So they were looking at whole body protein kinetics, protein synthesis, breakdown, and net balance in people consuming a moderate amount of protein, 40 grams, or a much higher amount of protein of 70 grams. And the results were that the net balance was greater in response to the meal containing 70 grams compared to 40 grams. The greater net balance was achieved primarily through the reduction in protein breakdown and to a lesser extent, the stimulation of protein synthesis. So the 40 grams did maximize muscle protein synthesis, but the net balance was greater achieved by the 70 grams because it reduced protein breakdown. So that means that whole body net protein balance improves with greater protein intake. So if you can take as much protein per serving as you want, then what should you actually be looking for per serving size? Number six here, each protein dose, you should be looking for up to 3,000 milligrams or three grams of leucine in addition to getting all of the other essential amino acids in your protein serving as well. So why is leucine singled out here? Well, if you remember from the previous video, consuming meals that contain three grams of leucine maximizes muscle protein synthesis. And it does that by stimulating the mTOR signaling pathway. And it has been demonstrated that leucine accounts for the majority of the anabolic effect of a meal and the administration of amino acid mixtures lacking leucine or with only small amounts do not stimulate muscle protein synthesis in adults. Now, figuring out how much leucine is in the food that you eat may be more difficult, but the protein supplements that you purchase, you should be able to figure out how much leucine is in it if the product provides you with an amino acid profile like this product does. So you can see right on here that this product includes 3,000 milligrams of leucine in each serving which is perfect. That's the exact amount of leucine that we're looking for. So when you're looking for a protein supplement, you should look for one that provides you with the amino acid profile. That way you know how much leucine you're getting per serving. Now let's move on to number seven, which importantly says that your protein doses should be evenly split up throughout the day. So like every three to four hours. Now, yes, you can take as much protein per serving as you want, but that does not mean that you should take your entire daily protein intake all at once. Reason being is that if you did that, then you'll only have the amino acids from the protein flowing throughout your body for only a select few hours. Whereas if you split up your protein doses, then you'll have a more continuous flow of those amino acids in your body which will better allow your muscles to be rebuilding all throughout the day. And here's another big question with number eight here. Do I need to take a protein shake after I work out or should I take it before I work out? Does protein timing really matter? Well, the answer is not really. It's really a matter of individual tolerance. You can take your protein shake before you work out. You could take it during, you could take it after you work out. It doesn't really matter because the anabolic effect of exercise is very long lasting. It's at least 24 hours. And here's a meta-analysis on protein timing. And the results of this meta-analysis were that with respect to hypertrophy, which is just building muscle, total protein intake is what really matters. These results refute the commonly held belief that the timing of protein intake in and around a training session is critical to muscular adaptations and indicates that consuming adequate protein 
in combination with resistance exercise is what really matters. Okay, the easiest way for me to explain this is if you take two people, exact same weight, exact same goal to build muscle, and one of them, they only consume 100 grams of protein in a day, but some of that protein comes from a protein shake that they take right after they work out. And then the other person, they consume 150 grams of protein in a day, but they don't take a protein shake right around their workout. They are still going to build more muscle than the first person, even though they didn't take that protein shake, because they are taking more protein throughout the day. Okay, what really matters is how much protein you're getting in a day, not when you're taking that protein. Okay, now there's nothing wrong with taking a protein shake before or after you work out. If you like to do that, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can't be hung up on thinking that, oh, if I just take a protein shake after I work out, that's all I'll need to do to build muscle. No, what you need to do is be making sure that you're getting enough total protein intake throughout your day. And there's so many different protein options if you do want to supplement. There's whey, there's plant protein, there's hydrolyzed, there's isolates, there's concentrates, there's casein, there's milk protein, there's native protein, so many different options out there. But you're going to have to wait till next time to learn all about them. So let's recap what insights we made in this video. Yes, you need to increase your protein intake if you want to build muscle, but you actually need more protein if your goal is to lose fat than you do in your goal is to build muscle. The amount of protein you take at a single time does not matter as long as it contains around three grams of leucine. And the time that you take your protein is far less important than actually making sure you are getting the total amount of protein that you need. So I hope you found this information useful. I want to thank you again for watching. And just remember to go reach your pinnacle.